hello friends i'll be discussing the recall questions of aims november 2019 uh, coming to question number 1 which of the following is not seen in superior semicircular canal dehiscence here the answer is b that is snhl sensory neural hearing loss question number 1 answer is b that is snhl if we see that superior semicircular canal dehiscence we see a hearing loss which is conductive in nature and not sensory neural in nature now coming to the details of superior semicircular canal dehiscence syndrome uh, the superior semicircular canal it forms a, a prominence in the middle cranial fossa which is known as arcuate eminence arcuate eminence in the middle cranial fossa now this superior semicircular canal and this is the arcuate eminence and this is the dura which is then this is the brain and if uh, the superior semicircular canal dehiscence is if this bone this bony portion is absent or if it is uh, uh, if it is absent congenitally or if it is acquired loss of the bone the brain uh, the superior semicircular canal it becomes receptive to any changes in the pressure in the external auditory canal or any changes in the intracranial pressure so patient will have nystagmus patient will have nystagmus and peripheral vertigo so vertigo and nystagmus will be similar because the the role of superior semicircular canal is uh, for the uh, acceleration and deacceleration of any changes in the body so uh, if there is dehiscence if the patient is doing nose blowing or if the uh, the patient is pressing in the external auditory canal or if patient is coughing or if there is a loud noise it all leads to nystagmus and peripheral vertigo now coming to uh, hearing hearing symptoms the hearing symptoms the patient doesn't have any loss in the cochlear uh, loss so the snhl is not there the patient will have a conductive hearing loss and this thing can be detected the condition can be diagnosis can be made clinically and uh, diagnosis can be done by hrct temporal bone now what is the treatment of such kind of patients uh, the treatment is exploration and uh, patient can be uh, explored and it can be uh, the bone uh, the 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 uh, dura and the superior semicircular canal can be reinstated the bone, missing bone can be reinstated by a cartilage so exploration and reinforcement is the treatment of choice and if the patient is not going for any kind of uh, surgical treatment the patient should avoid provoking stimuli so here in superior semicircular canal dehiscence syndrome the condition uh, the hearing loss which we get is not sensory neural it is conductive coming to the other option uh, the tulio phenomena tulio phenomena is a phenomena in which there is vertigo on exposure to the loud, loud noise so tulio phenomena if you remember we can see in meniere's disease it can also be seen in superior semicircular canal dehiscence autophonia is patient is able to hear his or her voice own voice very clearly so autophonia that is autophonia it can happen in a conductive hearing loss and oral fullness is also present in a uh, superior semicircular canal dehiscence so not seen is option number b that is snhl coming to the second question which was asked a patient underwent lateral skull based surgery for few months back uh, uh, and has presented with complaints of recurrent aspirations there is no change in the voice of the patient which of the following nerve is most likely injured during surgery so in this question we are being asked what is the sensory nerve supply of uh, the, the larynx above the vocal cord because the patient is having recurrent aspirations the patient will have aspiration when there is bilateral complete loss of the sensory nerve, nerve sensation above the vocal cords so here the answer should be uh, c that is superior laryngeal nerve in superior laryngeal nerve uh, the more specific thing is internal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve so answer is c
that is superior laryngeal nerve internal branch. If you can just correlate and remember uh, the nerve supply of the uh, the larynx above the vocal cords, uh, the sensory is by the external uh, the internal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. At the cords below the uh, cords is by the recurrent laryngeal nerve, and all the motor supply uh, uh, to the uh, of the larynx, all the muscles of the larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve, except for cricothyroid, uh, which is supplied by the external branch of this nerve only, that is superior laryngeal nerve. So, cricothyroid is uh, required when we are raising the voice. So, the, if it is injured uh, during thyroid surgery, the timber of voice is lost. But here, the patient has undergone a little skull based surgery and they are asking us specifically the, uh, the, the nerve which can lead to recurrent aspirations. So, here the answer is C, that is superior laryngeal nerve. 